Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I want you to understand this. Jesus, John the Baptist actually is talking, tell, talking about Jesus. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. How many know there's no forgiveness of sin without repentance? Amen? Got to repent. But he talks about Jesus here. But he that cometh after me is, is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. In other words, I'm not even worthy to unlatch his shoes and wash his feet. This Jesus, he said, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He will fill you with the Holy Spirit and he will fill you with a fire that's inside you. Amen. He said his fan is in his hand. He fans the fire, Jesus does. He fans the fire. And he will thoroughly purge his floor. He will thoroughly purge you. You will be changed. You will be changed. You will change under the fan of the Lord, under the baptism of the Holy Spirit, under the, the fire that God has put in you, amen? Do you ever wonder why some people never change? It's either the lack of understanding or something's wrong somewhere, amen? There's supposed to be a fire inside you, a boldness inside you, because you're filled with God. We're going to go through some different things in Acts, illustrations of how they were filled with the Holy Ghost, what we're supposed to be like, what they were like. It says, the fan is in his hand. He will thoroughly purge the floor and gather his wheat into his garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. He will burn up the hell that's inside you that holds you back with unquenchable fire. He will set you free, amen? He will set you free with the power of the Holy Spirit. He will baptize you in the Holy Ghost. When you accept Jesus Christ as Lord, the Spirit of God comes in you. But sometimes you need additions to that. So many times we need the filling of the Holy Ghost to make the difference, amen? Finally, my brethren, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, 10, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. It's up to you whether you want to take on this baptism, amen? Whether you want the fire of the Holy Ghost in your life, it's up to you. He said, pray whatsoever. Ask me whatsoever you would ask me, and I'll give it to you. Ask me whatsoever, and I'll give it to you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It isn't his might, it is his power, not in the spirit of God that dwells in you. Yes, it is. You, you put on the whole armor of God. You do it. Somehow we think it's just going to be done for us. Nothing gets done unless it is prayed for. That's why Jesus said, Master, how should we pray? And he says, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, holy is thy name. Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Where? Where? Why not in us? Isn't it in us? Amen. Let your will be done in us. And what's, what's the, the will of God? That the fire of God would burn inside of us. Amen. that the fire of the Lord would burn inside of us. I wasn't going to go there, but I'm going there right now. Romans 8. For the law of the Spirit, verse 2, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the Holy Ghost, the baptism in the Holy Ghost has freed me from sin and death, from being passive in the Lord.
They that are after the flesh, they do mind the things of the flesh. They that have, they that have a desire to always follow, do what their body says they, it wants to do. This fulfilling those desires eats them up like a cancer. Pulls them away from God. No matter what it is. You could, ha you could be in a church, you could be in a church that everything is being done right, but there's something wrong with the spirit in that church. Everybody know what I'm talking about? There's something wrong with the spirit in that church, amen? It isn't right. And the more those people stay in that, even though it looks religious, even though it looks right, it isn't right. And that religious spirit that's, that's a counterfeit of the Holy Ghost eats the whole congregation up and it seems like nothing that they do is right after a while because it's not in the Holy Ghost. It's in another spirit that counterfeits itself. It's another Jesus. It isn't Jesus. It's another Jesus. The Bible says they, they preach a different Jesus. Those that are after the flesh, they seem to mind everything that's after the flesh. Those that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But he says, but those that are after the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, they seem to mind the things of the Spirit. The more you dwell in the Holy Ghost, the more you're in the Spirit of God, the more you will have the Spirit of God working in the life, your life. Amen? The more that you're in the flesh and you mind the things of the flesh, you might have a desire to do a lot of things. You might have a desire to get angry. It hurts your walk in the Holy Ghost. You might have a desire to lie. It hurts your walk in the Holy Ghost. Even though you might say, oh, I, I, I ask forgiveness. I know that I lied to my wife. I know that I lied, lied to the, the boss. I know that I fibbed a little bit. I shaded the truth. I didn't totally lie, but I shaded the truth. That pulls you away into the flesh. And so you go home and you look at the box of donuts and you go, why not? I deserve it. And you eat them all. I remember this story, it, was, it really was kind of funny. This woman said to her husband, she says, I desire a brownie. I desire to eat brownie, a brownie. And he says, when you have that desire, you just go walk around the block and it'll pass. <laughs> I thought to myself, what a horrible thing to say to, to your wife. What a horrible thing to say to your wife. One little brownie, what's a brownie gonna, little did we know, when she ate one brownie, she ate the whole pan. I had no idea. <laughs> Amen? She ate the whole pan. I don't know how she did it. <coughs> when you are reacting in the flesh, whatever it is, it makes you react in other areas of your life in the flesh. When you react in the Holy Ghost, it makes you react in the Holy Ghost in uh, other areas and every area in your life after a while. You hearing me? I'll get by with this. Those who mind the things of the flesh, they are fleshly. Those who mind the things of the Spirit. It says, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Those who operate in the Holy Ghost, they are the sons of God. All right, now. I want you to see something here. It says in uh, Proverbs 28.1, The wicked flee when no man pursues them. See, the wicked, the wicked, you talk about wicked people, the wicked, they have all types of hell inside them. 
the insecurity, feeling inferior, a lust for this and a lust for that, they're filled with all unrighteousness. And it's said that in Romans 8 that anyone that's in the flesh cannot please the Lord. We've been bought with a price. We're to serve the Lord now. We're not to be in the flesh because in the flesh, God, everything that's in the flesh, God says, I don't want you to do that. And I will say this, that simple, that God hasn't allowed. Seems like the flesh always wants to go over the edge. Amen? It always wants to go over the edge. That's why a lot of Christians can't do a lot of things because the darkness in them wants them to always go over the edge. There's certain things they can't do, certain things they can't eat because they'll go over the edge. Certain places they can't go. It said, the wicked flee when no man pursueth them, but the righteous, the righteous are as bold as lions. Bold as lions, they don't care. Lions are very bold. They stand up against it. They're like called the king of the jungle. When they walk around, they don't walk around like the pink panther. Hide behind the tree. <laughs> They're not like Scooby-Doo. We're always running, taking off. But a lion is bold. He stands fast in the open. Now I want you to see here in Acts chapter 1. It says here, chapter 1, verse 5, And John truly baptized, just as Jesus talking to his disciples, John truly baptized you with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Now they believed in the Messiah. They believed in the cross of Christ. They had an understanding. Jesus is now dead. He is risen from the dead. And he's talking to his disciples. What's it going to be like, Jesus, when the Holy Ghost comes? And this is what he says. But you shall, be, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You're going to get the power of God in your life when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses. You shall be witnesses both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the othermost parts of the world. You're going to be bold. You're not going to shut your mouth. You're going to be different now. But it's not until the Holy Ghost comes upon you. So he says, I want you to wait at Jerusalem. You wait for the Holy Ghost to come upon you. The Holy Ghost has already come, folks, 2,000 years ago. Yes, there is a perfect time for you, but I want this to be instilled in you. Today's the day of salvation, amen? Today is the day that we move ahead in Christ. Paul said, be filled, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You be strong. You be strong. You can't spend all week long in the flesh and then say on Sunday morning, I'm going to be alive and hallelujah because it don't work like that. It really doesn't because you've been in the flesh. So when you come into the church, you go, golly, where's my enthusiasm at? I just don't feel like praising God. I just feel like going to sleep because you've been sleeping all week. Amen? <laughs> you've been sleeping in the Lord all week. But this is not you. I'm just explaining why other people act that way. Amen. Ver, uh, chapter 2, it says, But when the day of Pentecost, Jewish holiday, was come, they were all with one accord in one place. Oh, that makes such a good church. When everybody thinks alike. Amen. Amen. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. God always comes when people are in one accord. Amen. When the husband and wife are in one accord. The Spirit of God comes in that house. Angels come down when that man calls on the Lord. Amen? Amen? That's what happens when everybody's in one accord. But that's why Satan comes in to divide a home. Because in every and any home that's divided, it doesn't stand with the Lord. It can't stand with the Lord because it's fleshly. Division is flesh. Amen. Togetherness is God. 
Amen? Amen? Division is flesh. That's why Satan has come to destroy the families with divorce. And suddenly there come a sound from heaven. From heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each one of them. What did Jesus say? I will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen? Amen. What happens? Well, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, when you're in the place that you need to be with God, you can't keep your mouth shut. Your mouth always gets you in trouble with the world, with them that are in the flesh. Amen? Amen? But that's how God wants it to be. And I'll show you that. But they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with tongues, with other tongues. Oh, I don't know if I believe that. You're in the flesh when you're believing. You're talking, you're thinking like that. You're in the flesh when you think like that. Being the Spirit of God, God's taking you into new directions, into new heights. And say, I guess I'm supposed to be speaking in tongues. How do I do this, God? How do I operate in this? I learned about it, and I prayed for six months for it. Didn't know where to go to get this. But one night, God got a hold of me. And my school teacher that had MS called me up. I was at the, my shop underneath the truck, and I got out all full of grease. You imagine God filling somebody with the Holy Ghost all full of grease. And I was all full of grief. She says, would you take me to a prayer meeting? And I thought, oh, oh. Yes, I'll be there. I'll pick you up and I'll take you. You know, sometimes you just think, can I do any more? And so I got all cleaned up, got there, took her to the prayer meeting, but I was the one that got blessed because God had healed my back two weeks prior to that. Oh, I didn't think he healed unless you had the filling of the Holy Ghost. God can do anything he wants. God can do anything he wants. You know, there's a lot of teachings out there. And I went there, and everybody's getting their testimony. I gave mine, and at the end he says, does anybody want the filling of the Holy Spirit? And I go, I do. And I was changed that night when they prayed for me. They prayed for me. You will change people's lives when you pray for them. But you got to have something that they don't have. Amen? And they were full filled with the Holy Ghost and just began to speak with tongues. I'm going to tell you what that tongues is. That's just a boldness in the Lord. That's what that is. I'm so bold I want what God wants and I don't care what my flesh thinks. Oh, this, this just sounds like kind of crazy. Yes, there is false tongues. There is false tongues. And people have a hard time. They get in the flesh all week. And then they come to church and they think they're going to speak in the Holy Ghost. And it isn't God. That shimmy, shimmy, shimmy that's happening, it ain't God. Because they haven't been in the Holy Ghost all week. It's a counterfeit. But those that are in the Spirit, they speak by the Spirit of God. And how important that is, and how important that is needed today. Oh, pastor, it's true. It is true. When you fast and you pray during the week, when you go to church, it's the real McCoy. And that needs to be. That needs to be. We grew up in churches that were so in the flesh. They walked outside. I ain't going to get into it. Anyway, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak with tongues, and this, as the Spirit of God gave them utterance, they were ready for it. Give it to me, God. I'm ready for it. Give it to me, God. I'm ready for it. And as the Spirit of God says, here, here it is, they took it. They grabbed it. And they ran with it. Amen. That's what it's like. And that's what happened to me.
In Acts chapter 4, I'm going to show you here a little something about being filled with the Spirit of God. 4.8, Peter's talking. Peter and John, you know, they went uh, to the hour of prayer. They were kind of churchy type of people. God was everything to them. They went to the hour of prayer, and there was a guy at the, ga at the gate at the door asking for money, and they, Peter said, silver and gold, I just don't have any with me, but what I do have, I'm going to give to you. I'm going in for prayer. Why was Peter always full of the Holy Ghost? Because Peter was always doing the work of God. He was convinced that he, it was time to give up his fishing business because God had called him to a full time in the ministry, and so Peter did it. And in verse 8, 4, 8, he says, Peter's addressing the council, and he says to this, because they brought him in for questioning. They didn't like it that this guy got healed. They didn't like it that he was teaching in the name of Jesus. Amen? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. And down in verse 12, I'll just skip to that. He said, there is no salvation in any other person but Jesus Christ. That could have got him killed. Amen. But he was bold because he had the Holy Ghost and with fire, and he was dealing with things in his life. And he said, I'm not going to serve my flesh, but I'm going to serve God. I'm not going to go to sleep right now. I'm going to pray to God. Amen? Amen? And we know what Peter did. So he went back and he told all the people that were in church, and this is what the people said in church. Verse 29, And Lord, behold their threatenings. Behold the threatenings of that church, of the council. They want to hurt Peter and all the boys. It wasn't Peter and all the girls. Amen? Amen. I make a bid today for men to rise up. Amen? Amen. And now the Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants with all boldness. Notice what they're just to have, boldness in the Lord, boldness in the Spirit of God. So you got the church praying that Peter and them and everybody be bold, that they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal. Well, maybe God will touch you. Ever imagine yourself in the supermarket? You've never prayed on anybody, and somebody's really in bad shape, and they go, well, hey, Joe, how you doing? You know, uh, I'm doing all right. Golly, you're in the thick of it there. I see you're in a wheelchair, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And before you walk away, you turn around and say, would you let me pray for you? Just let me pray for you. That's a boldness that many times the devil won't allow people to have, but you turn around and say, let me pray for you. So you, you kind of put your hand there and you put it on his shoulder and you pray for him. And the guy looks and says, wow, I feel so much better, thanks. You see him a few weeks later and he ain't in the wheelchair anymore. He said, I'll tell you, the time that you prayed for me, I started getting better. This is what's going on here. By stretching forth thy hand to heal that signs and wonders may be done. In the name of Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. And I want you to see something. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled with the Spirit of God. They probably were already speaking in tongues, but they had to strengthen themselves in God. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord. Yeah, we're going to church, honey. We're going to church because everybody else is there. We're going to church. I don't know who's there. But we're going to church and we're going to pray. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the good word of God with what? Boldness. Boldness. Hallelujah. If you go into Acts 6 through 8, it talks about Stephen. Stephen was... He was one of those that they said, uh, hey, we can't be waiting on tables, Peter said. And the boys, we can't be waiting on tables. We got to find seven guys that, that are full of the Holy Ghost. Seven guys that are full of faith, full of the Spirit of God. And it says here, so they found seven guys. One was Stephen. 
that was full of the Holy Ghost. It says here in chapter 5, full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. Full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. That's two different things. Full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. So Stephen was one that qualified for it. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great signs, miracles, and the people. Do you want, you want God? Say, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. I have faith. I like, I believe you can do this and that, but fill me with the Holy Spirit. Do you know, sometimes you just got to get somebody to pray with you, and I would suggest that if you got a friend at home or a friend anywhere at church, have them pray with you. Amen? Anyway, the boldness of Stephen in chapter 7 gets him killed. But I want you to see something about this boldness. It isn't, it's different than your boldness getting angry. It's different. It is a boldness in God that you don't care what people think. All you care is what God thinks, filled with the Holy Spirit. All you care is what God thinks, even unto death. Even unto death. And I tell you, you young people, push into this. Now that you got all your scruples together, amen, you can think right, you're clear. Amen, you don't need four naps in the afternoon. Well, that's just how it is. I, I got home yesterday, I was so blown out, and I didn't do that much. But when you're young, you can push in. When you're young, I've known young people that could, they, they would work, they, were, they would pray, uh, they would fast, working at Donnelly's, um, and a lot of that work is very hard, and they, were, and they were on their fifth day of fasting. They were young and able to do it. Amen? I, I really tell you why you're young. Push in Christ. Amen? Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Jesus was filled full of the Holy Spirit. Jesus had boldness when he spoke to the Pharisees. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, that's how God wants us to be. But the boldness has to be from the Spirit of God inside you. You've got to spend time with God to have that boldness. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That boldness. When Jesus was arrested and they took him before the high priest, Caiaphas, and they couldn't get him to say anything. And he says, I adjure thee by the most high God. Jesus had to. Because when the high priest said it like that, you had to answer him. Are you the Christ? Are you the son of God? And what did Jesus say? Knowing it would condemn him. This is the thing that will get me nailed to the cross. What did he say? I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming in the glory of his Father with angels one day. You shall see it, Caiaphas. And Caiaphas stood back with the boldness of Jesus and rent his clothes, condemned, crucify this man, for he is blasphemed. But he didn't. He was the Son of God. But he had the boldness of the Spirit of God, because he was all God. Amen? Amen? And that's what happened to Peter. That's what happens to everybody that is filled with the Spirit of God. You say, filled with the Spirit of God. Spend time in prayer. Spend time praying with me. You get the filling. You'll get, you'll get that fire burning. You may be used to have that fire burning, but you can get it back. All you got to do is go for it, and God won't accept you any other way. Amen? If you're still pumping, breathing air, it is not too late. In Acts 9, 17 through 20, it says when Paul got knocked off his horse on the road to Damascus, one Ananias came in and said to him, Saul, God has sent me. And he prayed for him, 
and he baptized them in the Holy Ghost. Paul was filled with the Spirit of God. Now I'll say this, Paul was filled with the Spirit of God and it was after that, a day or two when he was strengthened, he started eating again because he was fasting and praying that he was baptized in water. Amen? Some say, well, you can't, get, you can't get the filling of the Holy Spirit unless you do this water thing. I'll tell you what, water thing can come when it comes. Amen? That's an outward sign. I've died to self. I've died to, to my flesh. Honoring my flesh, I've died to that. I've died to that. And it says, this is what happened to Paul. And this is the words in verse 20. Straightway, Paul went into the synagogues and started preaching Jesus. He confounded the Jews because they thought they were so smart, but Paul was smarter in the scriptures. And he was proven that Jesus was the very Christ. He was the Son of God. There, in that there was no other salvation but through this man. It got him killed. But not before God allowed it. Peter was an old man before that happened. Paul went out before Peter. Paul spoke with boldness. That's how God wants us to be, bold in the Lord. Remember this, the more you follow the flesh, the more you will entertain it. Remember sometimes a sin starts so small with just a glance, just a look, and it ends up in a complete blowout. Sin sometimes comes with just a thought, I'd be better off alone. And all at once, the wife that he loved all those years with those children, he walks out. Because so, uh, uh, something entered into his mind one day. It was just a tiny little thought. But he didn't leave it alone when it came back around. And it, pass, it passed through like a stranger. And then it passed through again. And then that stranger came in and made his home in there. And from there... It went down into here. You hearing me? The things of the flesh you can think on. And all at once they become reality. So a man thinks. So is it. Right? That's why you don't. You stay out of the flesh. You stay in the spirit. But how can you stay in the spirit if you don't have a clue what it means, what it says, what it teaches? Well, I didn't know that was wrong. I had a wife come here one day. She, we were teaching on a Wednesday night, and she said, I got to complain. Is it wrong for a man to look at women? He looks at her and says, honey, that's just eye candy. And I says, Oh, I can see we need a teaching here. Amen? No such thing. No such thing. No such thing. Amen? Isn't that amazing? The guy got, that guy was a man that it was a word of faith. It really sounds religious, don't it? Word of faith. I'm, I'm a person of word of faith. Word of faith. Sounds like you ought to have it together. And he didn't even have that together. Jesus said, if you look, you've already committed adultery. Yeah, well, that was, a first, that was well, the first verse I brought up to him. And he says, well, you beat me up pretty good. <laughs> well, you might as well know. That's why you come to church to learn, amen? Right. The more, the more, the more you do it the more you do it. See, you act like that all week long, and then you come to church, and you, find, you start getting into it with one of the elders. Say, honey, did you really have to fight with the elder? Well, I've been in the flesh all week. I've been doing fleshly things all week. I'm either just in the week. 
in the flesh. And then he goes home and wonders, why did I act the way I acted? You've been in the flesh all week. You haven't been doing anything in the spirit all week. And if it was, it was just a passing thought. I guess I should pray. And the wife says, honey, get over here. I got something for you to do. The devil plays you like a fiddle. <laughs> Amen. Who was that? Charlie Daniels that talked about the devil and some. <laughs> plays it like a fiddle. Amen. Number one, ask God to submerse you in the Spirit of God. Well, how do I do it? Just said it. Ask God when you're in prayer to have kindness and submerse you in the Holy Spirit. He said, well, how often do I do that? You know what? Well, once a day wouldn't be bad. Twice a day would be better. Three times a day, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three times a day would be great. God, Submerse me in your spirit. Submerse me in your spirit. And you, I'll tell you what, you'll see a change in your life. Give it a week, give it two weeks, all those prayers, all that time. God, I want to be filled with your spirit. Let me say this. If you want to pray in tongues bad enough between you and God, because it says a man that speaks in tongues speaks mysteries unto God. He doesn't speak to men. He speaks unto God. That's your prayer language. If you want to start praying the things that need to be prayed, and you, if you're kind of tired of, God, I just pray the same thing all the time, you can start praying different. If you say, I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I don't think I can live another day praying this one prayer over again. When you get to the end of yourself and say, I need God, like never before, God will say, okay, let's do something. Let's do something about it. And it'll happen. It'll happen. Me as a Catholic boy, I knew, I knew that there was something more in God because I heard somebody talk and I wanted it. How bad do you want it? It's not a big thing. It's not hard for God at all, but how bad do you want it? Do you want to stay in the flesh? with that religious spirit on you. Say, oh, I don't know if I want to do it. I don't know. It's like, you want to stay there? You've been saying that for a lot of years. Why not get the fire of God in you and the boldness of the Lord like a fire flowing through you, amen? I remember asking my priest, I go, I said to my priest, I says, why don't you teach us something about the devil? Because where I was at Saturday, that Saturday night, prior to that, wasn't a good place. And he said, you know, sometimes we've got to think for ourselves. And you know what he, he said to me? He says, the devil's locked up on a chain. I looked at him and I says, where I was at, he's, on, he's not locked up on a chain. I knew nothing about God. But I did know this, that I needed God in my life. That man that went to school for eight years, I asked him, my ne next question was, I says, have you ever read the Bible through? He says, I never have. I said, what'd you do for eight years in the seminary? Because my brother went to the seminary. He said, we just studied the doctrine of the church. Now, I wasn't disrespectful. I was very respectful. But I walked away, and this is what was in me. I don't buy that. I could think for myself, and I'm telling you to think for yourself, and at least consider what I've told you today. Be a man, be a woman of God. Press into the truth. You might not ever pray in tongues, but you can be filled with the Holy Ghost, the boldness of God, and that religious spirit be can left in hell for the rest of its life. Amen. You're out of there, and you're seated in heavenly places. Amen.
But I pray that you do move in the fullness of the Lord. That's what I pray. I pray you do move in the fullness of the Lord. And the Lord speaks through you. Whether it be in English or in another language. That people would be inspired by you. Because it's all over in the Bible. It's all over in the New Testament. I encourage you. With all boldness here today. I encourage you. Amen. And it's good that I'm a little thorn in your side. It's okay. It's a good thorn. It's a good pushing. Amen. My dad would always say, if you're going to do something, do it right or don't do it at all. Amen. Amen. And so somehow that got ingrained into me. And if I'm going to do something, if I'm going to operate in God, I'm going to do it right. Well, let's just get, let's just get out of it. Amen? And that's kind of how I am. I can't live a lie. Any of you guys can live a lie and feel good about it? I can't. I just can't live a lie. I just can't live a lie. I can't be one way and then portray that I'm something else. Like, just can't do it. I gotta. Um, there is a fire burning inside of me, and I believe it says, and the Lord has his fan. And every one of us are like that. He's got his fan and he's fanning the flame of the Spirit of God inside you. Amen. Amen. Fan that flame, God. And I'll tell you what, you'll rise up. Rise up in the Lord. You know why? Because you've prayed for it. That he'd be glorified. That he'd be glorified. Read John 15. You'll love it. You'll love it. Amen. John 15. Let's sing. Amen. 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 Amen.